today I'm going to show you how to make some little poinsettias for Christmas gifts. And this is what they look like when they're made with my poinsettia stencil set. Um, but although the ones that I've made have been with my own stencil set, there are there is a way you can make them even if you don't have my stencil set. And this is quite interesting because a lot of you crafters have got drawers full of cutters and all you need really is a five pointed uh, flower cutter preferably more than one because it's better to have more than one size but this is the basic that you can get away with to make something a little bit like this um, obviously if you've got the cutters the the stencils they do come out um, a bit of a better shape because they're more they've got a, a, a greater indent so my cutter set has five different sizes of poinsettias but let me just show you how to do this if you've only got cutter, cutters in your house and of course you can make all sorts of other flowers by the same methods so here's the cutter that I'm going to use and this one's by a company called Carla Craft, but there are all sorts available. So I've just got a piece of card that you can get in any any shop. It's just the sort of basic. Can't remember how how many grams it is. It's about a hundred and up to mm, hundred and fifty, perhaps something like that. But it's just like a basic a basic uh, lightweight card. And all you do is cut out your poinsettia. If you want to, you can cut out more than one so that you can print more than one at a time. Um, on my sets, they've got anything from two to six, depending on what size of flower. So I'll show you the difference between the printed one, uh, uh, the cut out one and the stencils that we sell. And you can just see that that's got a, a greater indent. Although, essentially, it's the same. It's a five-pointed flower. Right. So, the best thing to do with both your own homemade cutters, uh, sorry, stencils, and with the bought ones, is to treat them first with baby oil. And this makes them easier to clean and longer-lasting. It just stops the uh, polymer clay goo from soaking in quite as deeply into the card and therefore makes the card last longer and easier to clean. You can clean it as well with baby oil. You can clean it with um, alcohol, but actually I've found cleaning it with baby oil is better. I used to clean with alcohol, but I found the al alcohol could... Um, eat into the card and destroy it so if you want your stencils to last more than one use this is the best way of treating them of course when you've got cutters it doesn't really matter if it lasts more than one use or not because it didn't cost very much to to make so you need the baby oil to soak into that card And then you want to get rid of any excess because we don't want it slipping all over the tile. Or, and we don't want it to mix in with the polymer clay goo and make it too thin. So that's all it takes to treat your stencil. Now, earlier on in my YouTube, I've got uh, information on how to make polymer clay goo. And polymer clay goo is simply a mix of polymer clay and liquid clay. And here I've got two greens and a red. The reason I've got two greens is it's, it's not worth me making every single shade of green. So I take uh, a very dark green and a very light green and I mix them whenever I need to use them into the sort of colour that I want. And in the case of making poinsettias, I would tend to use very close to the darkest green. But the nice thing about mixing your own greens is that even in the same plant, you can have a variety of greens. 
The other thing you're going to need is a spatula. And it's very, very easy to take a little bit of the goo. And I, as I've opened this, I've just noticed I've put a bit of extra liquid clay in it. Because presumably last time I used it, I found it was a bit thick. So you want it, the texture of a, a kind of thick cream. And I think last time I used that, I found it was just a little bit too too thick. I was showing it at a fair. So then get some of the goo on the back of your spatula like that and you just scrape it over your stencil like that. Once or twice, once will do. And then you carry on on the same tile. By the way, I've used a semi-matte tile um, um, and even you can use a very matte towel with a little bit of texture that can come out very well as well and what that does is it means that the back of your flower is not quite as shiny as it would be if you use a towel without any texture okay I'm happy with those and um, I'm not actually I'm not perfectly happy with this one and all you do if you're not happy with it is simply scrape it off again and then you can just start again. Don't leave your your uh, tile too dirty. If it if it's a bit dirty, just clean clean up because otherwise those bits will bake, and they will just put little edges on your on your flower. So once again, you can see that's not gone quite in. So I want to do it again. And if you're very careful, you can bring it back. You've got to be careful because that can fold up your stencil. Okay, and on the uh, special stencils, be very, very careful to use your spatula like this, slightly flattened rather than straight up, because what you don't want to do is to pick at these little sticking out bits because they are quite delicate. So you will, after a few uses, you will start to damage those little sticking out bits, but they can be replaced one at a time, so it's no problem. And they're not that expensive. Okay, so this is polymer clay and liquid clay, so of course it has to be baked. So you would put a whole towel full in the, in the oven, and of course do exactly the same again with the green ones. I'll just put those to one side. And um, if you want to keep your stencil, do clean it up straight after you've used it by scraping as much as you can off the stencil and cleaning it with baby oil. But I don't need to keep that one, that's going straight in the bin. So what I have here is some ready-made ones, but they are obviously made with my stencils. <coughs> And I've made all the various sizes there. And I've put them into bags so I can use them later. Right, before we do that, we need the centre of the, of the flower. And for that, you're going to need some fairly thick flower wire. <coughs> and I cut a small piece. This is actually longer than I will use in the end, but I, I prefer to use a longer piece and then shorten it later. And I've painted this with um, with acrylic paint because it was a white stem. Because I don't like the uh, dark colour stems that you can get. I prefer a lighter colour. Right, the next thing that you need is some, some accent beads. I've got some here. Unfortunately, these ones are, are uh, translucent, so you're not going to be able to see it very well. But um, I'm going to take a little bit of green goo on the end of my flower wire. And this flower wire, I think this one's 24 or 26, grade 24 or 26. And the reason for that is I want to poke it through the stem, so I need it to be fairly firm. If it's too bendy, It'll just bend when I try and poke it through. So I've made one there that's a bit too bendy, but I'll just use it to show you the beads. 
in a moment. So then you just dip the dip that goo into the beads there, like that. And then you can pop that in a piece of flour foam. And you can actually bake that with the goo in the flour foam. So when I'm making them myself, I'll make a lot of them and then pop the flour foam in the oven and it doesn't seem to cause it any problems. It'll bake in, in that flour foam. Don't bake those in the flour foam again uh, because once you start rebaking this stuff, it can droop. And once they're made like that, it's a, it's a good idea not, not to let them droop. They need to have a bit of perkiness. So I have tried rebaking into the pots and that they can tend to droop a little bit. Okay, so when that's baked, you'll then, there's a baked one, you'll then paint that with some ordinary acrylic paint, which I haven't brought with me to show you, but it's just an ordinary spring green acrylic paint. The centre of um, these, oh, I'll just get one actually. I brought a tiny one so I could show it, but this one hasn't got very developed flowers. But if you look right in the centre, you can see it's got little tiny green flowers and they can develop and burst, sort of burst open and they have a yellow look and they can have some red tiny petals in, in them as well. So. All those colours can be used, but for simplicity, I just paint them green. <coughs> right. So when you've done that, I'm going to use one of these, even though it's a little bit bendy. Now, let me see. I did bring some in here. So... I'll have some small petals. How's that green one got in there? There's a large green one. And I want some slightly larger red ones. Then Some medium sized green ones. You can see there sometimes I've got them diff slightly different colours. These ones are a bit lighter. Right. And you can put as many leaves on as you want. So what you do is you take this um, wire and you push it right through the middle of your petal and then push the petal right up to the beads. After that, I want a little bit of glue because I want to keep these little flowers separate. I don't want them to touch each other because otherwise they're all sort of bundled up. Then I need some beads. Where did I put my beads? Okay, these ones will do. Um, these are the, the very best beads, but any beads will do. These ones are, oh, I can't remember the name of them. Miyaki, I think they're called Miyaki beads. Very, very tiny. But you can use bigger beads because these are hidden in this case. So I've put a little piece of glue, a little dot of glue behind that flower. And then I just thread one of those little beads on the end there, push it up, and then I'll put the second petal on, making sure that I use the non-shiny side of the petals. Push it in. Push it up, and I want to make sure that the second petal fills in the gap between the the, uh, between the first ones. I don't want them to line up because otherwise it won't look so nice. And then another dot of glue. Another bead. 
these be this beads are causing me problems because I'm not I don't have my glasses on. So another bead. And now I'm using a slightly bigger flower. And the plastic just gives under the under the wire, so it's not a problem. So there, I've got three on. I won't put four on of that. I'll put three of those and then three of the others because it'll be quicker. Little dot of glue. A bead. And as you can see, that's just keeping those separate enough to make them look nice. A green leaf. And I'm using a slightly bigger leaf now. So on each each layer, I did the first two the same the same size, and I'm doing these two green ones the same size. But uh, on each layer, you can change size, and obviously making the green ones is exactly the same as making the red ones. It's simply stenciled. Bead the other way up, flower. Ah, I've bent my wire. That's the problem with using a lighter weight wire. You need a certain strength of wire to push through the plastic. Another leaf. Again, making sure that the tips show between underneath the ones of the previous layer. More goo, more glue, sorry, more glue, not goo in this case. And just the last big green leaf. And one last dot of glue. You don't, you don't need the bead on this one. Just to hold that up so it doesn't slide down. Then you can leave it in the flower foam to dry if you like. Or you can go straight to putting it in a pot. Now, I've got these pots which are sprayed silver. But I haven't put any mud in those. So I remembered too late. Um, but I've already got some of these little pots prepared, which are just ordinary terracotta pots, just distressed a little bit. And these pots come from my friend, my Spanish friend. He's called His business is called Mubaco. And you can find information on, on his pots, or you can find contact information in my book um, and on the internet, M-I-B-A-K-O. And um, then all you do, I've already, I've already filled this with polymer clay, then some goo, and then some uh, scenic uh, soil. Then I've baked it and finally drilled it in the middle so that there's already a hole there. And I find that's the easiest thing to do because otherwise we would have to bake it again after I've put the flower in, and I don't want to have to do that. Then you cut your stem to size, put a little glue on the end, and pop it straight into the, I could make this short enough, straight into the pot. I haven't made it short enough, I'll just shorten that a bit more. Because the last leaf wants to sit right down on the soil. Just pinched that as I was putting it in, so I need to just open it out a bit. And there you go. And I think if you've got a miniaturist friend, that's a beautiful little gift to pop in a stocking or a cracker for them. And if you want a bigger one, 
you can put three in a pot and they look they look very nice indeed so very simple now why don't you go and see some of the other uh, YouTubes in our Christmas collaboration you'll find lots of interesting small things to make for gifts for your friends <laughs>